Welcome to a lesson on geometric formulas. In this lesson, we will determine the circumference of a circle, the volume of a cone, and also determine the length of a missing side of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. In example one, we're told the circumference of a circle with radius r is given by the formula c equals two pi r. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle, so we can also think of the circumference as the perimeter of the circle. The radius of the circle is the distance from the center to the circle, this distance here, which we normally label with the variable r. We're asked to determine the circumference of a circle with radius 32 centimeters, and we're asked to write the answer in exact form in terms of pi, and in approximate form, run it to the nearest hundredth, meaning two decimal places. So starting with our formula, circumference equals two pi r, we'll substitute 32 for r, because the radius equals 32 centimeters. So we'll have the circumference c is equal to two times pi times 32. So for the exact circumference, we want the circumference in terms of pi, so we'll have a pi in our circumference, and because two times 32 equals 64, the exact circumference would be 64 pi, and because the radius is in centimeters, the circumference is also in centimeters. So this is the exact circumference. And now to approximate the circumference, we'll actually do this two ways. A common approximation for pi is 3.14, but most calculators also have a pi key, which would give a more accurate approximation for pi. So we'll determine the approximate circumference using both methods. So going to the calculator, let's first use the pi key on the calculator, which will give us a more accurate approximation. So we'll enter 64, and then to access the pi key, we press the second, and then the exponent key here, and then enter. To the hundredths place value, because we have a one in the thousandths place value, we would round down, we'd approximate the circumference to be 201.06 or 102 and six hundredths. Let's go ahead and record this. Again, this would be centimeters, and this is the approximation using pi on the calculator. And now let's make another approximation using pi is approximately 3.14. So we'll enter 64 times 3.14. Notice how it does give us a different value. This approximation is not as accurate as this approximation here. So our second approximation is going to be 200.96 or 296 hundredths centimeters. And we'll say this is the approximation using pi is approximately 3.14. So it is important when doing the homework to read the directions carefully, my suggestion would be to use the pi key in the calculator unless it indicates to use a different approximation for pi. In example two, we're told the formula for the volume of a cone of base radius r and height h is given by v equals one third pi r squared h. A cone is pictured below. This length here would be the height, and this length here would be the base radius. We're asked to determine the volume of a cone with a base radius of five inches and a height of 12 inches. So because we're determining volume, we measure volume in cubic units, so our volume is going to be in cubic inches. We're asked to write the exact form in terms of pi and also an approximate form to the nearest hundredth. So beginning with the volume formula, the volume V equals one third pi r squared h We'll substitute five for r and 12 for h. So the volume is equal to one third pi times five squared times 12. Now following the order of operations, we would simplify the exponents first. Five squared is equal to five times five or 25. So we'd have the volume v equals one third pi times 25 times 12. Now before we multiply though, because we have a fraction here, notice how if we write 25 times 12 as a fraction with the denominator of one, we should recognize we are going to have a common factor of three between three and 12. There's one three and three and four threes and 12. And now we can multiply and notice how the denominator is one, which means the product is going to be pi times 25 times four, which equals 100 pi. So the exact volume is equal to 100 pi, and again, the units would be cubic inches. 
Now let's make our approximations for the volume. Let's first use the Pi key on the calculator. So we'll enter 100 and then using the Pi key, press the second and then the exponent key, enter. Notice here we have a nine and a thousandths place value. So we round up to 314.16 or 314 and 16 hundredths. Again, this is cubic inches, and this is the approximation using pi on the calculator. And now let's make another approximation using 3.14. And this one we shouldn't need the calculator. 3.14 times 100, we should recognize will be 314. Let's go ahead and show it. 100 times 3.14 is 314. Again, this is the approximation using pi is approximately 3.14. Before we look at example three, let's look at the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that given any right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C as below, notice how the two legs form the right angle. The hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. It's also the longest side of the triangle. The following relationship is always true. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we can use this theorem to find the length of one side if the length of the two other sides is known. These three equations here are derived from a squared plus b squared equals c squared for solving for a, b, and c. We're asked to find the length of the leg x of the right triangle shown below and then write the answer in exact form in an approximate form run it to the nearest thousandths. Let's first make sure we label the three sides correctly. Remember, A and B must be the two legs. Let's let this leg be A and this leg be B, and the hypotenuse must be C. Because we're determining the length of this leg here, which we labeled A, we'll go ahead and use this equation here that's already solved for A. So we have A equals the square root of C squared minus B squared. So in our case, we'll have a equals the square root. Well, c squared would be 14 squared minus b squared, which would be 8 squared. Simplifying, we have a equals the square root of 14 squared is equal to 196 minus 8 squared is equal to 64. So we have a equals the square root of 196 minus 64 is equal to 132. So the exact value of A is the square root of 132, and because the lengths are measured in centimeters, the length of side A is exactly the square root of 132 centimeters. Depending on what class you're in, you may be able to stop here, but I also want to show how the square root of 132 can be simplified. If we look at the prime factorization of 132, 132 is equal to 2 times 66. 2 is prime. 66 is equal to 2 times 33. 2 is prime. 33 is equal to 3 times 11. Both are prime. So the square root of 132 is equal to the square root of 2 times 2 times 3 times 11. But 2 times 2, which equals 4, is a perfect square. And we know this because we have two equal factors here. We can simplify the square root of 132 to 2 square root 33. The 2 outside the square root came from the square root of 2 times 2, or the square root of 4, which equals 2. So let's also express the exact length as a equals 2 times the square root of 33 centimeters. So here are two ways to express the exact length. And now let's also show the approximate form. So we'll go back to the calculator, and we can enter either of these two forms. Let's check to make sure they're the same. So second x squared brings up the square root, and then we enter 132, enter. Let's also make sure that 2 square root 33 gives us the same value. Notice it does. And we're asked to round to the nearest thousandths, which would be to three decimal places. So because there's a one, in the 10 thousandths place value, or fourth decimal place, we're going to round down. The length is approximately 11.489 
centimeters. And again, this is the approximate length. I hope you found this helpful.